it's been a minute since I've made a video, and I thought that with the update to ACX and the update to things that I have learned during the course of this journey of mine into narrating audiobooks and into voiceovers that I thought I would share an updated version of how to create an audiobook sample for ACX. So let's get into it. Okay, so you're on ACX and you have no samples on your profile and you're thinking, okay, what can I use? What do I do? I don't know what's allowed, what's not allowed. Well, here we go. ACX will allow you to grab a book off your shelf and use that narration as a sample for audiobook um, narration on ACX. They themselves say that. And if the author has an issue with that sample, then ACX is more than happy to take it down. If you're still not comfortable with that, you can do the same thing that I did. And what I did is I went to Project Gutenberg, which is gutenberg.org. That is a website where you can find books in the public domain, meaning they are out of copyright. And they are also all classics, right? Classics that you recognize. So this is what Project Gutenberg looks like. So when you type in gutenberg.org, you'll come to this page, right? You could go to the menu and you can search and browse, learn more about Project Gutenberg, or you can even donate to the cause. So if you go to per search and browse, you'll see their popular books, random books, the latest releases, the latest books that were released from copyright. Or you could do a search, an advanced search, full browsing options. But the nice thing about um, Project Gutenberg is that um, there was, I just had it, I don't know where it went, but you can also search by language. There are tons of different languages in here. So uh, maybe browsing options, oh, here we go. So there are all of these different languages that these books are available in. So if you speak one of these languages, it might behoove you to narrate or have a sample available in another language other than English. So check those out. But what I did is I went to a book that I know and love, and that is The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. So all I did was I scrolled down until I found something that I want to narrate. And if you come to, um, oh, here it is. You just click on the title that you want to narrate, and then you have some options on how you want to read it. You can read it online. You can read it as EPUBs. You can read it as a Kindle, or you can download the book in its entirety plain text. There's a lot of different formats for you to view the book. I downloaded the book and now I have a section selected that I'm going to use for my ACX sample. So now that I have my copy selected, I'm going to go to my DAW, my digital audio workstation, Adobe Audition, and create a file. And to do that, I can go up to new and select audio file, or I can just hit shift control n on my keyboard and that will also create a new audio file because this one's going to be an audio sample i'm just going to name it something like my full name and then underscore sample so i know what it is and then i'm going to say what the sample is sleepy hollow so when i go back and look for it i'll know which sample it is and i'll even have a folder on my desktop for just nothing but demos or samples. So everything's all in one place and easy to find. So we're gonna go ahead and open that file. So now I've just hit record in Adobe Audition, the file is recording, and now I'm just going to narrate a paragraph, right? Something short of Sleepy Hollow, just to give the listener an idea of my narration style, the sound of my voice. So make sure that you clear out all the gunk and get yourself ready to narrate take some nice drink of you know take a nice drink of water <clears throat> and i also have my clicker ready for mistakes here we go as he as he approached the stream his heart began to thump he summoned up however all his resolution gave his horse half a score of kicks in the ribs and attempted to dash briskly across the bridge.
but instead of starting forward, the perverse old animal made a lateral movement and ran broadside against the fence. Ichabod, whose fears increased with the delay, jerked the reins on the other side and kicked lustily with the contrary foot. It was all in vain. His steed started, it is true, but it was only to plunge to the opposite side of the road into a thicket of brambles and alder bushes. The schoolmaster now bestowed both whip and heel upon the starveling ribs of old gunpowder, who dashed forward, snuffling and snorting, but came to a stand just by the bridge, with a suddenness that had nearly sent his rider sprawling over his head. I'm going to redo that line because I didn't like the way I ran out of breath. With a suddenness that nearly sent his rider sprawling over his head. Just at this moment, a plashy tramp by the side of the bridge caught the sensitive ear of Ichabod. In the dark shadow of the grove, on the margin of the brook, he beheld something huge, misshapen and towering. It stirred not, but seemed gathered up. It stirred not, but seemed gathered up in the gloom, like some gigantic monster ready to spring upon the traveler. I think that's good. So now I'm going to go back to Adobe Audition and stop the recording. And now I'm going to save it. Okay, so now that I've saved it, I have a preset, a rack preset. There's a preset here in Adobe Audition. Well, it comes with lots of presets for you to start with, but you can create your own. I have a video here on YouTube where I show you how to create your own rack preset, and I'll put that up above here. But for now, I'm going to use the preset that I have made for my voiceover, and I'm going to apply it before I edit. Because when I go through this edit, hopefully just this one time, I want to be able to remove any mouth clicks that my effects have not removed, reduce any plosives that my effects have not completely removed, any errant, you know, noise that shouldn't be there that my effects didn't catch when they were being applied. So the goal is to only listen through this one time. And then after we listen through it and remove the retakes, then we will, I'll show you when we get there. But first, let me put my ears on so I can hear this. And let's go through and edit this. Okay, so let's get to the part where I'm actually narrating. Okay, so we're going to get rid of all of that. And you don't want a whole lot of wait time in your samples. But I do want to make sure that this sample is properly formatted for Adobe, I'm sorry, for ACX. So I'm going to copy some room tone. And using my duration meter down here, I can tell how much room tone I have selected. So I don't have nearly as no, a much, I, near, I don't have... I don't have nearly as much as I wanted, so I'm just going to copy this and then paste in another bit until I get about 0.6 seconds. So I'm going to copy that, and then I'm going to repaste it in so my narration starts between a half a second and a second. That's an ACX standard. So now that that's correct, I'm going to go ahead and listen through and see what else we need to remove. That breath is a little awkward midway through the sentence, so I'm going to eliminate that. I'm going to get rid of that breath midway through the sentence. I'm going to get rid of that big breath and just paste in room tone. That's where I did the retake. So I'm going to find where I started this sentence. Okay. And then I'm going to go to after my click to where I retook it. There's another retake. So I start, I restarted with it stirred not. So let's find the old one. There it is. So I'm going to select all of this plus the click and delete. 
Okay, so that was all of my sample there. So I'm just going to get rid of all of this me talking to you. Paste in enough room tone to cover at least a second. Let's see what we got here. I'm going to highlight this. So I've got 1.3 seconds. That's enough. So now that it is edited and effects are added and the head and the tail of the file are adjusted appropriately, the last step, the very last step, actually, first, I'm going to save this as its waveform. Now I'm going to normalize it to negative 3 dB, which is in your favorites on Adobe Audition, and you click normalize to negative 3 dB. Now to check this, to make sure that this is at all the other appropriate standards for ACX, I'm going to go to amplitude statistics. And if you don't have amplitude statistics visible, on your Adobe Audition, you go up to Window and make sure that the check mark is selected next to Amplitude Statistics. So now that I have Amplitude Statistics open, I'm going to scan my selection. And the very first, there's only two numbers on this list of numbers you're going to be looking at to make sure that you're adhering to ACX standards. And that is the very first number, which is your peak amplitude. I'm at negative three, exactly. That's where we need to be. We don't wanna be any higher than that. So if that number is a negative two something, it's too high. We need to turn the volume down. It cannot eclipse negative three. The other number you're going to be looking at is your total RMS amplitude, which is this one here. It needs to fall between somewhere between negative 18 and negative 23 dB. My file falls at negative 20.89, so it's perfectly in the middle between those two numbers. So we are within ACX's standards. So now I'm going to save this as an MP3. And I'm also going to change my sample type to 44100 and my bit depth to 16, and then OK. And sometimes this throws our amplitude statistics out of whack a little bit. It happens. So just so I know that it's still right, I'm going to scan it again. And my peak amplitude changed, but it's still within range. As long as it doesn't go any higher than negative 3, I'm still OK. And my total RMS amplitude is still where it needs to be. So we are OK. All right, so now that we are in back in ACX, right, if you go to your profile and right between your profile details and your preferred payment are your audio samples. I've just deleted all of mine and I'm going to add some fresh ones, this being the first. So what you're going to do is you're going to click Add Sample. We're going to name the sample. This is probably one of the most important steps. Don't name your sample My Audiobook Demo or My Audiobook Sample. Name it describing words, right? Words that describe what it is that you're doing. In my case, because I narrated The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, I'm not even going to use the title of the book. I'm going to say this is American, if I could spell it right, American, whoops, American female, uh, let's see, comma, uh, let's say... Suspense, drama, thriller. That will give the, hopefully the narrator, I'm sorry, hopefully the author looking for a narrator an idea of what kind of sample this is. So you could even say, you know, American female children's books. <clears throat> American female narrating children's books. American female narrating um, romance, right? Or it could be something something along those lines, right? To give the, the searcher an idea of what this sample is going to contain. Then you can go even further and start selecting some of the, uh, the genres here. So the genre, this would be, let's see, let's say mystery, thriller, suspense. It is in English, voice age, I'm going to say adult, <laughs> gender, female, accent is, let's just do general American. Vocal style is, um, 
what could we say this is? Authoritative, booming, brooding, deadpan, engaging. Let's say this is, hmm, I'm just going to go with engaging. And you might be saying, Angela, if there are drop downs or tags that will further refine the searcher's search, why is it necessary to use these describing words in the title of the sample? I'm glad you asked. It's because not all authors or publishers will use these filters to find you. They may just be, or maybe they don't even know they're there. They don't know how to use them. So we want to also put those describing words, those adjectives, in our title as well. So if they're not using a filter, they can still easily see what kind of sample this is. And if you have any performance notes, like if you are um, male narrating female part or vice versa, or if there are different character voices, if there's anything in here that you think the listener would like to know, or if you want to credit the author, and this is where you would put it. Okay, I have just uploaded my sample, and that was just simply you know, choosing where the sample lives and select it and upload it. Very easy. And then we click Add Sample. And there is my sample. And then what you want to do is just rinse and repeat, right? Just keep adding more samples. Try to diversify as much as possible, meaning if you enjoy all kinds of books and you intend to narrate all kinds of books, then have all kinds of samples. Have a book with you narrating self-help. Have another sample where you're narrating a children's book. Have another sample where you're narrating a romance, a horror, a thriller, um, sci-fi, fantasy, whatever it is. But just keep uploading samples. Samples. There is no cap on how many samples that, not that I know of anyway, of how many samples you can actually upload. And also a great tip is to recycle these samples, you know, at your chosen interval. So for example, if you upload two samples on a Monday, you upload two more on Wednesday, and then you upload two more on Friday, perhaps the following Monday, take down the two you had up last Monday and put them back up again, and then maybe add a new one, right? And then on Wednesday of the that next week, take down those two that you put up last Wednesday, Put, it, put them up again, and then maybe add a new one, right? Keep recycling them. Because as soon as you add a sample on ACX, they're, pro they're posted chronologically. So as soon as you post it, you're up at the top of the search list. So stay towards the top by recycling your, your samples. Repost them, and then add some new ones. And then eventually, at some point, you're going to want to take down the ones that you don't like anymore. Because naturally, as we continue to practice and do this over and over and over, you just will inherently get better. Your sound quality gets better. Your performance gets better. Everything just gets better with time and practice and training, right? So you'll eventually even want to just remove or just permanently delete some of these older samples and then just replace them with new fresh work, right? So this is something that you can do a couple times a week, once a month, you know, if you get to a point where it's maybe once every few months that you just recycle those samples to get up towards the top, that would be a, a really great thing to do to keep you up at the top of the search. So I hope that helped. And I hope that that helps you to win some book contracts. And don't forget also your auditions can also be used as samples as well. So get a little extra mileage out of that work that you've already done in the audition process. So even if you didn't win the book contract, you might win another with that same audition as a sample. So I hope that helped. And um, if you like this video, give me a like and a thumbs up and hopefully even subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.